Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Asif Qureshi and you are watching Dr. Asif Lectures. Today we are going to discuss a very important pathway called hexose monophosphate shunt pathway. HMP shunt pathway is also called the pentose pathway. Now this pathway has very important implications as far as its correlation with pathology and medicine is concerned. So this is a must for you to understand this pathway. So let's begin the pathway. Now on the slide you see uh, uh, this which is not new for you because you know that whenever glucose enters in the cells it is converted into glucose 6-phosphate then fructose 6-phosphate until the pyruvate is produced and what is uh, the the pathway known as glycolysis so you are very well aware of this that this is the glycolytic pathway so this is a normal routine for the glucose that it enters inside the cell and undertakes the glycolytic pathway and produces pyruvate now this pathway is known as glycolysis you are very well aware of this fact uh, glucose can also do one more thing. Actually, glucose can do three things when it enters inside your cell. It can either enter into glycolysis pathway or it can form glycogen, for example, the glycogen synthesis, whenever there is plenty of glucose, excess of glucose, it can start making glycogen. And then there is one more thing that glucose can do. Glucose can enter into HMP shunt pathway. And that's the pathway that we are going to discuss today. And uh, what you need to understand is what are the different steps and what are the key enzymes of the pathway and why this pathway is important. What happens, what is produced as a result of this pathway. So let's begin. Now glucose 6-phosphate can be acted upon in your in different cells of your body to generate 6-phosphogluconate and the enzyme working here is known as glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. Key enzyme important enzyme for HMP shunt pathway and I'll tell you there are different diseases associated with this pathway okay so once glucose 6 uh, 6 phosphogluconate is produced and one more important thing that you need to remember at this stage that since the enzyme is a dehydrogenase it always plucks out electron okay so that's an important thing for you to remember I've always told you in different pathways that we have discussed whenever there is a word dehydrogenase you should be thinking that dehydrogenase plucks electrons high energy electrons from the carbon atoms and they put those electrons onto somewhere on some carriers and here the carrier is NADP which is converted into NADPH okay now forward moving 6-phosphogluconate is again acted by another dehydrogenase which is very low yield enzyme but you should know that another NADPH molecule is produced here and it forms ribulose 5-phosphate which is converted into ribose 5-phosphate and ribose 5-phosphate you know is the pantose and it is routinely used for nucleic acid synthesis, nucleotide synthesis. So by far you should understand this that the end product of HMP pathway is a pantose sugar which is written here the ribose 5-phosphate and this is important and required for nucleotide synthesis okay so that's an important job of HMP pathway to produce precursors for production of nucleic acids okay this is one job what is the other thing that this pathway is giving to you this pathway is giving to you NADPH molecules and I will tell you what is the significance of NADPH molecules NADPH is a reductant it is it is a reductant it reduces it has extra high energy electron and this electron can be given whenever wherever it is required okay so this pathway basically gives you these two things if somebody asks you what is the end product of glycolysis, for example, you know it is pyruvate, you know about Krebs cycle now, you know about glyco glycogenesis, you know about gluconeogenesis, links of all those videos I'm giving in the description section, watch those videos as well. But here, you must understand that the output and the product of HMP shunt pathway, two folds. One, it gives you pentose for nucleic acid synthesis, Two, it gives you NADPH, which is a main reductant molecule. Okay, it is it can give electron whenever wherever required. Now, if you don't have to make nucleotides, uh, for example, in a cell, uh, there is another pathway that you need to understand where the pentose uh, feeds into, and it helps in production of some sugar molecules. Remembering the name of sugar molecules are not very important, but I've written them here anyways and these sugar molecules are important for normal functioning of nervous system neurons. Okay, now the enzyme is important transketolase transketolase is important for you to remember because it is one of the TPP enzyme family. You know, what is the TPP enzyme family? TPP enzyme family is the family of enzymes which require thymine 
pyrophosphate for their normal functioning. When I say thymine pyrophosphate, you remember vitamin thymine? So it is required for functioning of this enzyme. Okay, and that, that's an important. What are the other three enzymes which require thymine pyrophosphate? The name thymine pyrophosphate, the name is written here. It's alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase and uh, uh, all, all those enzymes that we have discussed previously or we'll discuss in the upcoming pathways. But here, transketolase requires thymine pyrophosphate. Okay, bang on, remember this. Now, there's a clinical correlate associated with uh, transketolase, very important. You may have heard of this disease. Wernicke Korsakoff disease. Now, Wernicke Korsakoff disease is when somebody has genetic mutation in the gene which is encoding for transketolase. Okay, so as a result of this, the uh, protein, the receptor is defective and thymine cannot bind to it. So that's a genetic problem. Okay, this is called a disease, defective binding of transketolase pocket to thymine. This is why it doesn't work properly. And therefore, wernicke korsakoff disease, they have uh, neurological manifestations because you can imagine if this enzyme is absent, then those sugar molecules will not be produced. And if they are not produced, there will be problems in uh, central nervous system physiology. Okay. Now, students confuse wernicke korsakoff disease with wernicke korsakoff syndrome. So please understand there's a difference between the two. Okay. Disease is the genetic mutation. And as a result of the mutation, when the clinical manifestation of neurological problems appear, that is what we they call uh, syndrome, wernicke korsakoff syndrome. Now, wernicke korsakoff syndrome is due to wernicke korsakoff disease, okay? Disease is the mutation and the clinical manifestation is the syndrome. So, uh, people have given uh, a lot of thymine to these patients so that there is more thymine present and the symptoms, they alleviate. Symptoms may be... You know, they, they sometimes subside if you give a lot of thymine to these patients. So what do you think will be uh, treated if you give thymine? Syndrome will be treated or disease will be treated? Very good, syndrome. So syndrome will be treated, not the disease. Why? Because disease is the mutation. By giving thymine, you are not correcting the mutation, but just by increasing amount of thymine, what you are doing is the symptoms are going away. And when symptoms go away, this is what we call uh, wernicke korsakoff syndrome has gone better, okay? Let's move on. Now, thymine deficiency is a different scenario. Many people, number one, they confuse wernicke korsakoff disease with wernicke korsakoff syndrome. Now, I have told you what is this. If you don't understand, rewind the video, watch that again. Now, there's a lot of students also confuse the wernicke korsakoff disease and syndrome with thymine deficiency, which is called beriberi. Now, if thymine is deficient, all four of these enzymes will not work. Therefore, you will have uh, neurological manifestations. You will also have manifestations associated with decreased ATP production because glycolysis will not be working. As you can see, alpha keto uh, dehyd pyruvate dehydrogenase is there, alpha keto glutrate dehydrogenase. So, crap cycle is not working, glycolysis is not working. Thymine deficiency is a different ball game where all the enzymes requiring thymine pyrophosphate will not be working. However, Transketolase, if problematic, if there is genetic mutation in transketolase, it will affect only one enzyme, uh, which is transketolase. Okay, so you will not have problems associated with uh, energy production. You will not have problems associated with other uh, enzymes which require thymine pyrophosphate. So remember how to differentiate between wernicke korsakoff disease and wernicke korsakoff syndrome and what is beriberi. Okay, beriberi, there is thymine deficiency. Now, this also happens in alcoholics. So remember, alcoholics have thymine deficiency, so they will have all signs and symptoms of very, very if it is long term. Okay, let's move on. Now, one important thing that you need to understand about HMP shunt pathway is that what happens um, with with the products and the cycles of HMP shunt pathway at least at three locations. What happens in liver? What happens in neutrophils, polymorphonuclear neutrophils, and what happens in red blood cells, okay? So here I have drawn the uh, HMP pathway, which we just discussed. It begins with glucose. Glucose enters the cell, glucose 6-phosphate. Then there's a very important enzyme which acts, and the pathway proceeds down to formation of pentose sugar, which is ribose, basically, okay? Ribose 5-phosphate. And what were the products I told you of HMP pathway? Twofold. One, it produces ribose, and two, it produces NADPH. And in liver, NADPH is utilized for formation of fatty acids, 
for formation of nucleotides, obviously you know that, and for formation of cholesterol. So liver utilizes HMP shunt pathway for synthesis of biomolecules, okay? So you must understand what is the job of HMP pathway in liver. Now let's move on and see what is the job of HMP pathway in polymorphonuclear neutrophils. Let's have a look. Now, the polymorphonuclear neutrophils, see the pathway is the same. Glucose enters, converts into glucose 6-phosphates, acted upon by glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase G6PD, and at the end you produce nucleotide, or, well obviously you will do that because of ribose. So you produce a pentose sugar which is ribose, and you produce a lot of NADPH. Now let's see in neutrophils in your, you know, these are the white blood cells, these are the soldiers of your body. Let's see how do the soldiers of your body utilize this mechanism of HMP shunt pathway. So the NADPH which is produced through this pathway is acted upon by NADPH oxidase and the hydrogen is, um, you know, you, you see there the hydride removed and it is now converted into NADP class and as a result, the electrons which were released from NADPH, I told you so many times, I cannot emphasize this enough, I have told you so many times that NADPH contains high energy electrons. And due to action of this enzyme, NADPH oxidase, those high energy electrons are removed and they are given to oxygen. And now oxygen is converted into a superoxide molecule. You see that minus, minus sign above? This is now a superoxide molecule. And as a result of this, what happens this superoxide is then acted upon by superoxide dismutase and it produces hydrogen peroxide H2O2. And H2O2 is a very, very important molecule for killing bacterial cells, so microbial killing. And this is what the job of neutrophils is. You know this, neutrophils have to produce something which can kill microorganisms and this is that something okay so hydrogen peroxide production is basically facilitated by NADPH molecule and from where is the NADPH molecule coming it's coming from HMP shunt pathway so imagine how important is this HMP shunt pathway in your liver for synthesis of biomolecules in your neutrophils for production of toxic hydrogen peroxide, okay? Let's move on to um, G6PD deficiency. So if somebody is deficient in glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, what will happen? You can appreciate that if G6PD is not there, what will happen? If G6PD is not there, there will be less NADPH produced, HMP shunt pathway will be affected, there will be less superoxide, and there will be less hydrogen peroxide, which means patient will be what? immunodeficient patient will be immunodeficient okay so that's a simple concept to understand there will be immunodeficiency now there are two other features of g6pg deficiency which are actually manifested in the red blood cells okay we will discuss them in the next slide but let's have a look what are these these are called Heinz body formation and hemolytic anemias now this triad of symptoms for G6PD deficiency is important to understand and learn because immunodeficiency can also be seen in chronic granulomatous disease. Chronic granulomatous disease is the deficiency of NADPH oxidase and patients presents to you with immunodeficiency. It's the same cycle, you understand that? It's the same cycle. If you don't have NADPH oxidase, you will not have uh, superoxides, you will not have hydrogen peroxide and you will be immunodeficient. How will you differentiate it from G6PD deficiency? Heinz bodies and hemolytic anemias, okay? Let's move on. Now let's see what is the job of HMP pathway in red blood cells. Now in red blood cells, you know we have hemoglobin and hemoglobin contains four iron molecules. One of them is presented here and the iron is in the form of iron plus, plus which is iron plus two. So that is the normal oxidative state of that iron molecule, okay? Now, what happens when oxygen combines with this hemoglobin, that's the normal physiology, some percentage of oxygen molecules plucks out electrons from iron and they are converted into superoxide. And if you pluck out electron from the ions of hemoglobin, the hemoglobin is converted to methemoglobin. And methemoglobin patients become cyanotic and problematic. So one more time, in normal persons, it is normal to have a very small percentage of hemoglobin being converted into methemoglobin. 
And how does that happen? Oxygen plucks out electrons from iron and the state of iron from iron plus two is converted into iron plus three. And the electron which is plugged out, the oxygen molecule is now converted into a superoxide, okay? And now what happens to the superoxide? Now, before uh, what happens to the superoxide, remember the methemoglobin is converted back to hemoglobin by donation of electron. How was methemoglobin produced? Because oxygen plucked out the electron from iron. So who donates uh, uh, electron back? Electron is donated back by NADH, the product of glycolysis, Krebs cycle. I hope you remember that, okay? Now, what happens to superoxide? Superoxide molecules are converted, as previously discussed, into hydrogen peroxide by superoxide dismutase, which is then converted into water molecule. But in order to convert hydrogen peroxide, which is toxic, to water molecule, which is non-toxic, electrons are needed. And those electrons are given by reduced glutathione. GSH is the glutathione, okay? Reduced glutathione, sulfhydryl groups on glutathione gives their electron and the toxic hydrogen peroxide is converted into water molecule. Now, once reduced glutathione gives its electrons, what happens to reduced glutathione? It is converted into oxidized glutathione. Now, in order to replenish the system, oxidized glutathione requires electrons so that it can again produce reduced glutathione and the cycle continues, okay? So basically we need electrons. And now from where are the electrons coming? Do you know a source of electron which is generated in HMP pathway? Yes, you know, NADPH. And this these electrons are then donated back by NADPH by the normal HMP shunt pathway. So here is the summary. HMP shunt pathway is a very important pathway which is one of the three utilization of glucose molecules. Glucose can, in your body, either enter into glycolysis or it can enter into glycogenesis or it can enter into HMP shunt pathway. Now, in HMP shunt pathway, there are two outcomes that you must remember. Outcome number one is production of pentose sugar, which is utilized for nucleic acid formation. Outcome number two, is NADPH formation, which is electron carrier. It is ready to give electron. It's a reductant, okay? Now, what are the implications of HMP shunt pathway in liver? In liver, it is utilized in biosynthesis of molecules. What are the important functions of HMP pathway in neutrophils? The NADPH is utilized there in formation of H2O2 so that bacteria may be killed. What is the utilization of HMP shunt pathway in red blood cells? It donates electrons in the form of NADPH to reduce glutathione so that the cycle of hemoglobin, methemoglobin system is balanced. See how beautifully your body utilizes HMP shunt pathway to use those electron molecules in different cell types of your body. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please subscribe the channel, share the video with your friends, and I'll be back to you with another video on metabolism.